What's up guys, it's Pliskin Boy here, and you know, we did a lot of these kinds of videos for the different snakes in the Metal Gear Solid series, and I figured it would be fun to also do this for Leon in Resident Evil 4, since talking about what the ideal set of guns would be in a game that prides itself on having interesting, unique, and useful weaponry would probably be a bit of fun. So let's talk about what Leon S. Kennedy would be best equipped with if we were to be his armor and send him off to go rescue the president's daughter. So first we gotta look at some of the conditions here. So first off, this is taking place in 2005. So we are going to be limited by the technology of that time. Secondly, the environment is gonna be rural Spain. It's cold, it's gonna be wet, it's gonna be muddy. Sometimes you're even going to end up submerged, so we need to keep this in mind when putting together our loadout. We need to acknowledge the fact that ammunition present on the field through gun runners or through the enemies themselves is going to be 9mm, 5.7x28mm, 223, 12-gauge, 45 long colt, and ACP. We should also take into account that enemies rarely shoot back at you, and when they do, it's usually with rudimentary crossbows. Even the more automatic crossbow types, eh, I mean, that's still not too much of a concern since those are still slow-moving projectiles. Of course, if we're keeping in mind the enemies of the original, we gotta keep in mind the guy that comes at you with the minigun, but we're mostly gonna be focusing on the remake. This loadout should still be applicable to the original, but just keep that guy in mind as an outlier. Lastly, we need to be thinking about the fact that this is going to be an escort mission. That means we need to watch our fire, so we need to keep in mind that we might hit friendlies when we are opening fire on the enemy. So there needs to be an element of precision to our loadout. So first up, let's talk about our handgun, arguably what we're going to get the most ammunition for. Now in this case here, we're mostly going to get ammunition for 9mm. Of course, the game uses 9mm and 5.7x28mm interchangeably, however we're going to focus more so on 9mm since that's what it says on the ammo boxes, and the majority of the weapon sandbox in the pistol category tends to be 9mm weaponry. So, with that in mind, there is not a single doubt in my mind. A Glock 17 Gen 3. I would say a Glock 19X because it comes with a little bit more ammunition and has a shorter barrel which makes it useful for compact, tight situations where you can't really extend your arms fully. However, because this is 2005, we're going to stick with the Glock 17. A little bit of a downgrade, but not too much of a downgrade. Still a fantastic weapon. Still holds 17 rounds in the magazine and you get plus one in the chamber, which should be more than enough. We're going to throw a flashlight and a laser sight under barrel. No one is really shooting back at us for the majority of the time, so we don't have to worry about a laser drawing enemies to our position when we're shooting at them since half the time we're at extreme close range, they already know we're there, and honestly, we'll take every advantage we can to aim faster when we have this kind of shit coming at us. And again, if there are scenarios where you are concerned about that laser or that flashlight giving you away, always remember, you can turn it off and then turn it back on whenever you need it. We're definitely going to have a threaded barrel to keep a suppressor on this just because there's so many caves, dark interiors, and situations in which you can drive yourself deaf and blind if you start firing a handgun. So for example, if I'm crawling in the underground caves of Salazar's castle and I fire off my Glock and it's pitch dark and the cave is like really tight and narrow around me, I might fuck myself up for the entire mission, so I need to stress the importance of having a suppressor. We're not going to worry about subsonic ammunition, as this suppressor is purely for our own comfort and safety. On the note of ammunition, since the game doesn't really stress different 9mm ammunition types, but definitely has certain weapons hit a lot harder than others, take the Red 9 from the original, that's supposed to be a 9mm, yet does significantly more damage than anything else. We're gonna interpret this as just 
how hot our ammunition is. So we're gonna go with the hottest nine millimeter we can find. We're not gonna spare any expenses. We're gonna get the fastest moving, heaviest hitting ammunition we can get just to put these guys down as quickly as the red nine would. Cause as the red nine in the original shows us, you can really fuck with nine millimeter in this game. And if we're taking the rules of this game and applying them to real life, even tougher ganados will go down if you hit them with spicy enough 9mm. Now, of course, when you're dealing with crowd control, when you're dealing with giant fuckers like this, you're gonna want something that stops them in their tracks. So, because of that, we're gonna go with the massive power, stopping power, spread, just sheer ability to tear apart flesh and bone of a shotgun. And with that in mind, again, there is no doubt in my mind when I say the Benelli M4 is the best option. First off, you can fit nine rounds into the Benelli M4. You might be thinking, Pliskin, how can you do that? You have a seven round magazine tube. Well, in the game, you have a five round magazine tube, but we're gonna go with a seven round magazine tube just because more ammunition. And then you could fit one in the chamber. So that's eight rounds in total, right? Well, if you already have a round in the chamber, you can actually pull the bolt back to an extent where you don't engage the extractor. And then you can sandwich another round in there, and then you have nine rounds to use. So if you have a quiet moment and you're willing to take the time to pull it back just right and fit in another round, you have a shotgun with nine rounds. The spread of this Benelli will be much closer to the spread of the Riot Gun in the remake rather than the original, just because shotguns, while they do have spread, it's not going to be that exaggerated kind of spread. So this is more like if you're aiming at a guy and there's a guy standing right next to him, he's going to get fucked too. Not you'll aim from the hip and shoot and just everyone in front of you will fly away. This is just a I see this thing here, I want to stop it in its tracks kind of gun. Again, we're going to stick a laser sight and a flashlight on this, just to make aiming a lot easier. In regards to the ammunition, I'm going to stick with regular 12 gauge buck. I would say slugs for certain situations, however, there's no shotgun in this game that really indicates the usage of slugs. So we're going to assume that slugs aren't available on this mission, and therefore, since I don't want Leon to all of a sudden run out of ammunition, for his shotgun or run out of the ammunition type we train him with, we're gonna stick with regular 12 gauge. We're gonna have a Velcro shell holder right onto the gun to make reloading a little bit faster because as any of you that have handled a shotgun know, the reloads can be the clunkiest and slowest part of a shotgun. So having something to speed that up will definitely help, especially when you have shit like this coming at you. Then of course we're going to have a match saver on this thing, for those of you that don't know, a match saver is a shell that you have hooked right up close to the bolt, so if you run out of ammunition but you really need that one more shot, you can just slide this thing back, hit the bolt release on your Benelli M4, and then have a round to send out there right away. And yeah, with that in mind, I believe you will have the best man stopper, creature stopper, just something you whip out when something's getting a little too close and you need to create some space. And again, the semi-automatic nature of the Benelli M4 will make it really good for crowd control. Now this brings us to the rifle. And with this, it gets very tricky because there's so many ideal rifle types and optics that would work so well for this situation. However, so little of this exists back in 2005. So at first I was thinking of a HK416 because it comes with pick rails. Uh, you can mount a popular optic of the time, a ACOG, and then for closer range, use your laser sight, throw a flashlight on there, suppress it. It's a piston system, so it'll handle well. And if there's one thing that both games show us is that these enemies are very fucking weak to 223. So you'll be able to chew them apart. And unlike in the game, you can actually set this thing from full to semi-auto and yeah, go for accuracy or go for crowd control. It's up to you. However, I realize there is a better choice for this situation. You see, the rifle, while I do want it to be a little bit of a jack of all trades, I do need to stress that there are situations where long range shooting 
will definitely help out. Therefore, you want something with a longer barrel. And the original 416s, I forget if they were 14.5 inches or 16 inch barrels, but I wanna go with something that goes a little further. And because we're using 223, I wanna have closer to a 20 inch barrel to really give that underpowered round a lot more velocity to get the kind of results we would see out of a 556. But I don't want us to carry a very long, cumbersome rifle. So because of that, we're going to go with a AUG A3, which was just made in 2004. It comes with pick rails, it's bullpup, so we can have that 20 inch barrel and not have it be too long. We can still throw our suppressor on there, we can still throw our flashlight, we can still throw our laser sight, still put the ACOG optic. All the things I wanted to do with the 416 can be done with this rifle. But now we can stretch out that barrel a little bit more. So when there comes times for, I don't want to say sniping, because you're never really sniping in Resident Evil 4. The distances are never going to be that extreme. But when you do get to some long distance areas, you can whip this thing out and have it get the results you want. Now, aside from that, um, any decent, durable survival knife, because we all know, or we've all seen how useful that can be. Although I do want to stress that avoiding that level of close range encounter is always going to be preferable. Even if people aren't shooting back at you, you just don't want to leave yourself vulnerable in a close quarter combat encounter. And then of course, any space that Leon has left, stuff as many flashbangs as you can bring with you. Because when the Plaga jumps out of these fuckers neck, it's better to just have a very quick way to deal with them. So yeah, if you were asking me what the ideal weapons for Leon S. Kennedy to bring with him to go rescue Ashley would be, I would say a Glock 17 Gen 3 outfitted with all the bits and bobs we talked about, a Benelli M4 optimized for speed and reloading comfort, and then of course an AUG A3 optimized for both long-range encounters and close-range crowd control and then our knives and our flashbangs but what do you guys think can you think of guns that would be better in this situation if you were going to get thrown into the situation what would you want to bring with you let me know down in the comments below anyways this has been pliskin over and out this is solid snake hey subscribe to pliskin boy god Damn it. You heard him. <laughs>